casting out the fly demon. Flies, we know now, are imperfect animals, generated from corruption, which they spread everywhere, carrying disease and contaminating foods. Anyone who has traveled in the East knows to what degree they constitute a true calamity. Zoroastrian demonology has made of the fly a female demon, the Nasu, embodying impurity, putrefaction, and decay, feeding in preference upon the dead. The Nasu may be smitten by corpse-eating dogs and birds, beneficent creatures of Ormazd, whose glance can cast out demons. Expelled by their gaze, the demon, disguised in the shape of an abominable fly, leaves the corpse. This forms the basis of the Sagdid ceremony, which must be performed before anyone may touch the dead. An infringement of the taboo makes necessary a complicated cleansing rite, called the Barash Noom, which the polluted must perform during nine days. The worshipper of Mazda shall dig three holes in the ground and shall thereupon wash his body with Gomez, oxyurin, not with water. They shall then lift and bring my dog, they shall bring him in front of the man. This is done three times, and the third time the defiled one is to be washed not with Gomez, but with water. He shall first wash his hands. If his hands be not washed, he makes his whole body unclean. When he has washed his hands three times, thou shalt sprinkle with water the forepart of his skull. This cleansing water will cause the Nasu to jump from one part of the head to another and chase her from the head to the chest. One after another, each part of the body is to be sprinkled with holy water in an oft-repeated and elaborate ceremony which ultimately drives the demon to the earth. From the right shoulder to the left shoulder, from the right armpit to the left, upon the chest, upon the back, and so on, until she is driven into the sole of the foot where what is seen of her is like the wing of a fly. From the soul, Druj Nasu is finally driven to her last stronghold, the toe. He shall press his heels upon the ground and shall raise his right toe. Thou shalt sprinkle his right toe with water. Then the Druj Nasu rushes upon the left toe. Thou shalt sprinkle the left toe with water. Then the Druj Nasu flies away to the region of the north, in the shape of a raging fly with knees and tail sticking out, all stained and like the foulest craftstras, devilish beasts. And thou shalt say aloud these fiend-smiting and most healing words. The will of the Lord is the law of holiness. Whom hast thou placed to protect me, O Mazda, while the hate of the fiend is grasping me? Who is he who will smite the fiend in order to maintain thy ordinances? Perish, O fiendish druge! Perish, O brood of the fiend! Perish away, O druge! Perish away to the regions of the north, never more to give unto death the living world of the Holy Spirit. The resemblance of this Zoroastrian cleansing rite to the Catholic rite of exorcism upon individuals possessed by demons is striking. In 1582, Jerome Mengo published his Whip for the Demons, which deals with this difficult matter. This curious work was tardily placed upon the papal index. Up to that date, the priest exorcist may have used rites, such as are recommended in Mango's treatise, which includes advice about washing the possessed frequently with holy water, not unlike the ritual Zoroaster prescribes. As in the bearish noom, the demon is driven away systematically from every part of the body. As anatomy was better known in Mango's time than during that of the Iranian prophet, the enumeration of anatomical parts is far more complete, which adds to the intricacy of the ceremony. At the end of the exorcism, the patient is bathed in a mixture of holy water and other liquids, so as to cleanse him of some malignancy against which no remedy has been foreseen, some spell which may lie hidden in the hair of the enchanted. Other peoples of the East also resorted to supernatural powers for protection against the fly plague. The Canaanites worshipped Beelzebub, whose temple was never polluted by these unclean insects. Beelzebub signifies Lord of the Flies. The Hebrews called him Prince of Demons, and the Pharisees accused Jesus of driving out other fiends with his help. Beelzebub was well known to the theologians and demonologists of the West. Pierre Le Loyer, 
first counselor to the king of France and an expert in such matters, tells us of a possessed woman in the city of Léon. Beelzebub, having been duly exercised, escaped from her mouth in the form of a fly. This is well testified to, he says, by notaries and many goodly people, so that no one can doubt this happening. In Christianity, Beelzebub is considered by many the sovereign of the empire of darkness. His prestige brought forth other fly demons, imps that were suckled by English witches, and the big fly that stung Cunibert, king of Lombardy. This incident occurred while the king was discussing with his favorite how best to rid the court of two noblemen who had defied him. The royal court gave chase, but succeeded only in cutting off the fly's legs. Meanwhile, the two noblemen were approached by an exhausted, one-legged man who warned them of the king's wrath, and they were able to escape. 